In today's video, I share a clip from a webinar that I did last week where I shared the exact strategy that I used to book 12 demos with mid-market companies in just seven days using a fully automated prospecting strategy with a unique twist that almost nobody else is using. And if you stick around until the end of the video, you're gonna see a way to get your very own copy of this strategy that I created to achieve the results that I show in the video. Are you looking for a way to book more appointments with qualified prospects? And would you like to automate your outreach on LinkedIn? Check out Flowster Connect. It is a fantastic piece of software for completely automating your LinkedIn outreach. Link right down below in the description, flowster.app slash connect. This is August, I started around August 3rd. Demo, 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 demo. It's working really, really well. And I am getting now mid-market companies with hundreds of employees to try Flowster out and sign up. And that's a pretty good thing. And if I, like, even if I only got one enterprise deal out of, let's say I spent 1500 bucks on gift cards and I got one enterprise customer out of it. Well, so my cost of acquiring that one customer was 1500 bucks worth of gift cards, but their first year lifetime value is like three grand. How many of you would spend $1,500 to acquire a $3,000 customer? And that's just the first year. Our app is particularly sticky. So they're going to pay me probably year two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now maybe my customer lifetime value isn't three, maybe it's 10, 11, $15,000 and I'm paying 1500 bucks in gift cards to do enough meetings to get the one person to say yes. Like in my world, that's a no brainer. I've booked demos with Petco, Client Boost, Cat and Direct, all these companies, look at 13,000 employees. They're probably not gonna sign on with us only because I don't know if we could ever even pass their security requirements for a company that big. That's not really my target market, but I still really wanted to do the demo with Petco and they they, they were super impressed with the software and that opportunity is still in my sales pipeline, so maybe. But these are like 138 employees, 40 employees, 29 employees, 23, 37, 1,600, 136, 2,800. These are great accounts to be doing demos with and all of these came from the strategy that I'm going to show you. I spent about 1500 bucks because uh, at in this iteration of the campaign, I was messing around with my $350 gift cards for COOs. And now I'm actually, I've tweaked my copy a bit and I've tweaked my targeting a bit. And I'm now going after marketing managers and HR managers. I'm not offering them $350 gift cards. I'm only offering them 105. So now I want to show you my system. All right, so I'm actually going to hop out of the slides. So give me a second to get out of the slides. Across those campaigns, as soon as the data populates, so you can see here that I'm getting acceptance rates of around 23% and I'm getting reply rates of around 52%. The current campaigns, I just started these ones yesterday, but let's look at COOs. So back in the COO campaign, let's go look at some of the copy for this particular one. So the way you do this is give it a name, you choose your hours, and then, and we have an SOP for this, by the way. So if you two decide that you wanna get on board with the software, I'll give you the SOP that shows you how to do everything. But essentially you're gonna go to LinkedIn and you're going to do a search and you're gonna put your filters in and you're gonna be like, okay, those are my peoples by whatever your own search criteria is. And then you just take that URL and you put it into the software. Then you then, and then you just write your connect messages. So on this one, I didn't mention the gift card in the connect message. I've now started to mention the gift card right in the connect message. And then after that, 23 minutes later, after they accept my connection, then I say this, thanks for connecting, yada, da, yada, da, yada, da. And then if I don't get a reply an hour in, or one day and 18 minutes later, there's some follow up. So basically this sequence will continue after a connection request has been accepted and it will continue until they reply. Now at the same time, because of the integration between Connected and um, the CRM that I use is Pipedrive. So if we look at Pipedrive, what happens is that these deals get automatically created in my sales pipeline and then my virtual assistant. So here's what, what here, let's just look at Nick. 
quirk. So in Nick's case, you can see that when connected, when they make the connection request, because of they've got this this information associated with their particular LinkedIn account, it pulls it back in. So I know that just because someone accepted my connection request, they might not actually pay very close attention to their LinkedIn messages, but they, I know, are undoubtedly watching this email address. So we do kind of like a redundancy thing. And so what happens is when the connection request is accepted, the very first thing my assistant will do is qualify them. She will open it up, she'll follow the procedure. Do they have enough employees? Are they the right type of person? Like there's some manual checks that we're gonna do. And then she'll just take the deal card. I don't wanna do it because I don't wanna trigger his app and I haven't reviewed this one yet. She'll just drag it over to whatever column we wanna send them the emails for and that fires a zap that then starts sending emails to the address that I showed you on their record that say more or less the same stuff as what we were sending on LinkedIn. So now we have a multi-channel campaign to get their attention. And then if we get a reply and they said, yeah, hey, you know, yeah, I'm happy to do that. We put them in this column and then if they want, if they go ahead and book the deal, then we put them in this column. So this is all open deals. If we look at one deals, like these are all deals that um, basically took yes to a demo and then I moved them over to my high level pipeline, which won't mean anything to you, but it's just part of our particular process. Uh, so let's go back to open deals. And so this is, I don't have to do, this is when I talk about automated and delegated. What I'm really trying to convey here is I have essentially no hand in doing any of this because I have the automation to begin with and I have a procedure for the manual parts and I have an assistant to follow the procedure to handle the manual parts. So even if, for example, if they reply to me, like in LinkedIn, they're like, hey, yeah, yeah the gift card idea sounds cool. I'm super interested. Well, then we're going to send them to, or my assistant is going to say, hey, that's super cool. Um, let's send you, so D, it's a decal. She sends them this link. They're then going to go, and here's how we qualify them. So let's just say I wanna book on the third, uh, the 17th at 2.30. Look at this, here's my qualifying. Is your company currently documenting processes on a regular basis, yes or no? Where are you documenting your processes? They put some information in. Number of people actively involved in process documentation. Now, so for you, you'd make these whatever questions you would wanna make them. So what I do is this then, when someone fills this out, this triggers a Flowster workflow on the day that they fill it out. So if I go into Flowster and I look at my calendar, you can see I got a bunch today that I actually have to review yet. So if we look at today, so demo for Zev, demo for Nicole, demo for William. So what ha So these are automatically created thanks to a zap. And it's my trigger to go into the calendar and look, were they qualified? Did they answer? Because if they wrote no, I'm actually gonna cancel the meeting because I don't wanna talk to them. Because the only, for me, qualified is in the mid-market is a gotta answer yes. Because all I'm trying to do, like let me show you my latest campaign. The first ones were, hey, I'm interested in doing some market research. Will you talk to me? Blah, blah, blah. But now that that worked so well, I'm kind of going more directly to the point. So for example, if we look at my outreach, this is a brand new campaign and if we we look at my message it basically says hey i see you're a marketing manager and i'm reaching out because we're building new workflow software for marketing managers i'd like to give you this gift card to for 30 minute call blah 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 what i want them to understand is that this isn't in this iteration of my campaign what i'm trying to tell you is this is less of a research call and more of a sales call the message is basically are you already documenting your processes cool would you be interested in seeing some uh, a, a better application for documenting those processes and are you maybe open to switching that's why i'm asking these questions so now that i'm getting i'm getting people who are booking calls with me who are predisposed to the idea of trying out a new tool for something that i already know they're doing so does that make sense that's how i am qualifying my leads to make sure 
that I'm not booking appointments with people that I would then owe a gift card to that would not be qualified anyway. And by the way, at the very end of the meeting, uh, so I've had I've had people two two things. I've had people respond and say, "Hey, I'll take the meeting, but don't worry about the gift card." Love those people. And then at the end of the meeting, I'll say, "Hey, if you want the gift card, just send me your address and I'll make sure I get it to you." Now, some people will follow through because they want their bribe. Fair enough. I offered them the gift card. They were qualified. I'm giving them the gift card. But what you're going to find, not everybody will follow through. They'll be like, like one guy I had, he got so much value out of the call because it was more of a two-way collaboration. Maybe we're going to be partners discussion. He would have felt guilty in asking for the gift card because he was kind of interested to talk to me to see if I would be a partner as much as I was interested to talk to him to see if he would be a partner. So why did the gift card need to change hands in that scenario? Well, it didn't really need to change hands in that scenario. As you can see, this is a super scale strategy that is producing amazing results. And if you'd like to get the software that I'm using to make this happen, there are links in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you would smash that like button and then consider subscribing to the channel. Take care and I'll see you in the next video soon. Bye-bye.